Music is liquid architecture. Architecture is frozen music. You all heard that one, haven't you? A famous quote that comes from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. But this always bothered me a little bit. Although it somehow sounds logical that we can compare different forms of art, and we very often do, I never really managed to rationalize this connection between music and architecture. Whenever I try to create a sensible theoretical skeleton in my mind, it just disintegrates quickly and leaves me only with questions. So what would be the point, actually, of making this kind of connection? Well, music is praised, justifiably, for the emotions it invokes in us. That is why most of us cannot imagine our lives without music, and it enriches our world on many levels. I am an audible person, and there is no visual stimuli that can make me have instantaneous goosebumps, like, let's say, first seconds of Mozart's symphony in G minor can. Now, there are many beautiful masterpieces around the world. But the world is also full with repetitive pop songs. Popular? Yes, they're everywhere. Boring, simple and uncreative? Definitely. So if we manage to make this connection, maybe we can use music as an inspiration to create architecture and vice versa. And when I say inspiration, I don't mean it in a simple way that we could do since forever. I mean it in a more scientific way. Establish some objective relations, some working algorithms. Maybe Goethe was on to something deeper that we are about to discover. Now, whenever I try to make a practical connection, I did what most of people do when they compare sound and space compositions. You cannot transform 3D geometry into sound easily, but you can transform sound into geometry. Not three-dimensional, but two-dimensional. Or if you think about it, almost one-dimensional. Sound is a vibration, oscillation of particles, and Pythagoras recognized that specific frequencies are harmonical for us humans. Conveniently, these divisions of frequencies were surprisingly elegant mathematically. Namely, we represent music in a linear fashion, and then we struggle to somehow connect that to architecture, sometimes. We usually start with a waveform, different frequencies for different elevations, 1D to 2D. But isn't this too easy? You can do that with anything. Take the change of temperature in year 2016 and play it. It's music. Look at the Eames chair and play that. It doesn't really give me anything that will help me compose or design better, beyond a simple spark of inspiration maybe, which, if I'm creative, I could pull out of thin air. Now, we can take cross-sections of buildings and listen to how they sound. We try to divide the geometry into blocks and transform them into different notes or chords maybe but always in a linear fashion because we cannot unroll a note progression into a surface or a volume. That's why I think that all these approaches, however cool and interesting they might be, are useless. And when I say useless, I mean practically useless. They might be extremely entertaining, puzzling, fascinating, inspiring, but for practical purposes, architectural design or musical composition, they represent just simple forced metaphors. Now, I have to disappoint you right away. I don't have a solution of how to connect those two. Honestly, there might never be a reasonable theory on how to do that, because music is sound through time, architecture is shape through space, and I know what Einstein says very well, but for our purposes, time and space are kind of two completely different things. Now, I have never done serious research on this subject, but I will go with my gut and try to think of a deeper correlation between the concepts of space and time in the context of architecture and music. I think we have to approach the subject by first examining the emotion that a space can evoke and compare it to an emotion that melody can evoke. This is the first step, I think, and it's not some spiritual word salad. If we approach emotions from a scientific point of view, like Antonio Damasio does, for example, in his book Looking for Spinoza, we might recognize some similar patterns on a chemical and neurological level. The second step would be a more direct connection of the melody with spatial volume, tonality with composition, but let's stay on emotion for now. When Sam Harris tries to explain that we can quantify morality, he starts by giving the most extreme cases about which we can all agree. There are cases where things that increase well-being of all conscious creatures can be objectively considered good, and things that do harm to all conscious creatures can be considered bad. So he tries to establish a certain framework, a start and an end of a sliding scale on which we can try to scientifically map morality. Now, I would suggest a similar approach. When comparing architecture and music, we can maybe find such cases where most of us can agree on the connection between them. The cases that will make us think that maybe there is some objective framework, objective scale that we can use to connect music and architecture on an emotional level. 
So what am I talking about here? Let us take Chopin's revolutionary etude, for example. You're aware of its wild character. Now if I asked you which building evokes similar emotions, this one or this one, I hope that most of you would choose this one. The preposterous left hand reflects much better the craziness of the form here, doesn't it? Now, arguably, some atonal postmodern music would also fit this one, but we are painting with a very rough brush here now to prove a point that there are some melodies that evoke similar emotions, like certain buildings. Now, if I went with something more relaxed, something with a standard repeating pattern, I might evoke the sense of simplicity or repetition or fluidity. If I stirred the air a bit but still remained romantic, I might evoke those curved, smooth feelings. Actually, in the case of the Bilbao Museum, we have such strong strokes that I cannot not think of a cello. Sometimes we can have pattern and strength at the same time. Sometimes we can have structure and strong romantic melody on top of it. And if I went all Russian, strong, relentless, I might evoke the feelings of large foundations, strong columns, repetition, safety, indestructible stone. Now this subject is very important for me. I find myself getting goosebumps after half a second when I hear some song that I like or some orchestral sound that wakes me up. I find my mood can change for an entire day when I discover some new composition or a new musician. I have to admit that architecture almost never manages to produce this kind of response. Do you think we can find some milestones, some examples where majority of us can agree? I think yes, and if you agree with me, we have a case. Then we can find an algorithm that can help us explore the artistic side of architecture objectively. Maybe. But we have to make a pause now. We have to think if what I just said makes any sense or is it just some bullshit theory. How can we test this? Can we make polls, surveys, Facebook, Instagram? I would like to know your opinion, so we can all think about it. In the next video on this subject, I will talk about different tonalities, chord progressions, Pythagoras' divisions of musical compositions that can maybe be translated into 3D geometry. I will try to get more practical. But until then, think, share, support, go to Patreon to support making these videos, stay free, and get to playing.